Hello, and welcome to what we're going to be calling Tales Unwritten. It's a, it's a show where people play a tabletop game, uh, and that is new and exciting, and you love it. It's definitely not, it's definitely not an old concept. Nobody's uh, done it. N nobody. And uh, this is not how to sell a show. We're going to do it our way. We hope it's fun for you, and it will be fun for us. So we don't care if it's fun for you, actually. So it's fun you're, for us. We're here to have, we're here to have fun. You're here to vicariously participate. Yeah, no, we just spent like an hour and a half setting things up just so we could, just so you could watch us have fun. It's yeah. for us, not for you. I mean, it's kind of for me. You put way too much effort into this for not to be for you. Like, yeah, there's, there's a know, lot I, of I your DNA in here. <laughs> yeah. Now, we don't know much about what happened hundreds of years ago, but what we do know is the world was much bigger. Then demons known as the remnants entered our world, threatening to destroy everything and everyone until the goddess Fora appeared. She kept the demons at bay and separated a small series of islands from the rest of the world. This is known as the Bastion Archipelago, and as far as the people here are aware, the rest of the world is gone, overrun by monsters that we have no way of understanding. Our story begins in a small town in the Bastion Archipelago known as Tradesman's Saddle. Many tradesmen pass through here, both to and from the city, which provides a lot of money that flows into the community from people just passing through. Someone entering Tradesman's Saddle would notice that it's largely made up of a town square and a residential area surrounded by numerous plots of farmland. The town is densely populated for the size of it, but it's not a very big town. You can see where the main road enters and exits the town with your naked eye. Like, you can just look down and see where you're leaving. One main thoroughfare. Yeah. On this road, entering from the north, we see a Small man with goat-like features. Nick Landing for Torlandis, our first player. Would you introduce your character, please? Yes, I am Karna of the Dancing Air. Karna Freehorn. I am of the Fawny people. One might you colloquially refer to as a satyr or something of that ilk. I, I wear a fairly, fairly casual dress. While traveling the roads, I, I typically wear a hooded sort of travel cloak. A simple breezy open-chested shirt, a little belt where I keep satchels, a lot of my traveling equipment, a loot strung over my back, and a scabbard with a uh, fanciful blade handle sticking out of it on my side. I travel with, you know, much mirth. I, I'm a very happy, carefree sort of fawny. And as I stroll towards this town that I've, I've been to a few dozen times in my travels over these lands, uh, I, I'm struck with nostalgia and glee. A smile strikes my face as I enter the town and start kind of like strumming a little happy tune. Could you make a perception check for me? I absolutely can. First roll of the campaign. Let's see what we get. Perception check. 17 on the die plus four equals 21. Okay, well, yeah, then you can see whatever you want. My big ass goat eyes are just so perceptive. The town's a little different from when you last saw it. Um, a lot of farms that you used to see were independently owned uh, now say Cullen Farms on them. Is this a family name that I would recognize from my previous travels? Yes, yeah, they, they, they're a farming family that's been here, that they're well established here, and that's part of how they've probably been able to incorporate so many farms into their own already fairly large farm. Do I have any like sort of reputation with any of the family members? I'm not sure how long it's been since I've been back. Uh, my, due to my long lived nature, I don't really pay attention to how many years go by when I leave a place and come back. Sometimes it's decades, sometimes mm -hmm. it's less. The Cullen family probably would have stayed clear of you because a lot of their acquisitions have come through pe marrying people into their family. Ah. Doesn't matter if they're marrying a man or a woman, you're marrying into the Cullen family because they're bigger and have more resources. So so it's one of those, oh crap, it's a funny, better hide our daughters kind of situation. Yeah, you, we gotta they, save they don't them sully, first. They don't want to sully their marriages with their sons or daughters. Gotcha. I have a reputation. <laughs> with the sons and the daughters. Yes. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> You notice that. Is there anywhere that Karna would want to go first? Ah, uh, if there was anywhere that he would travel, like especially in towns that know him and he knows, the first place he would typically go to check in would be either the local inn or the tavern. Sometimes they're combined. You know this tavern as, as one that was, when you first came here, it was run by your friend Annabeth's father. Then mm -hmm. it was run by Annabeth herself. Now it's run by Annabeth's uh, daughter, Erin. Her great-granddaughter, Lydia, is, is, a, uh, is a barmaid. So Erin is probably in her more matronly years at this point then? Um, Erin is 64, so so she's getting up there. 
Okay, so she's... But she's still spry. Well, I, I just kind of, like, wander into the tavern, take a nice deep breath, uh, you know, smell whatever soup they might have cooking in the air, the smell of ale and wine. You smell a mix of beef stew and fish stew. Mmm, that's an interesting combination. Someone might want either. It's true. <laughs> it makes sense. It's raining. And now it's a and, storm and, and, rolls and, and, and in. A storm rolls in <laughs> as I walk into the tavern. It's, it's, no, it's a sunny day in Port Tarif. Okay, Port Tarif is sunny. <laughs> the outdoors has no bear basis on what's happening at the table. Okay, Outside fine. is wrong. Outside They're is wrong. wrong. <laughs> and not canon. Well, I will say before you enter the tavern, you do feel just a slight tug at your waist. Hmm. Um, nothing's pulling you, but like you still feel a tug. If you like, you can make an insight check on that. You don't have to. I would certainly like look down at my okay. waist as I'm walking in and like greeting. Uh, to inside 18 plus or 18. I would say then you can tell that it's coming from your sword handle. Like oh. it, it's, and you can tell that it's pulling you down the road a little bit. I look down at the blade. Has this, is this a sensation that has happened ever previously? Let's roll for it. Let's see. Okay. Well, that's the first nat one of the campaign. How about that? Then no, this has never happened, and you are extremely confused. <laughs> Since you have rolled a nat one and you have failed your first check, I will be giving you inspiration tokens. I'll give you oh, two for oh, a nat one. Oh, I'm inspired. So we're going to be doing inspiration a little differently here. We were at, we had a, like a conversation off camera about how nobody uses inspiration. Can I see the coins? No, you're not inspired. Yeah, no, you have to wait till you're inspired. You'll get inspiration. You'll, you'll fail a check. <laughs> I don't feel very inspired. But, uh, so so we're, so we're kind of, well, I'm stealing something from uh, the kids on bike system where when people fail a, a check, they get little uh, tokens that they can use to essentially add to whatever role they make in the future. It's um, interesting. If you like make a role and you're like one away from making a DC check, you can spend a token. Oh, okay. And, however, I, n the next long rest you do, you will lose those tokens and you give them back to me. Yeah, I, t I take a nice deep breath as a smile crests across my face and I lower my hood, uh, stepping out of the sunlight and into the nice, uh, easy air of the shaded tavern. Lydia, um, young woman around 24, seems fairly shy, but is trying to be outgoing, I think recognizes you. And it lights up a little bit, it's like, oh, Uncle Karna, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing well, Lydia. What a beautiful young woman you've grown to be. I haven't seen you in like 10 years. 10 years, has it been that long? Well, I'm passing through, looking for a place to set up shop. I was wondering if you were looking for a traveling entertainer for the evening. I mean, do you wanna, do you wanna talk to Grandma Erin about it? Oh, I'd um, love to. I'd love to check in and see how she's doing. How has she been? Oh, you know, she's... Uh, She's getting on. She's not sick, but she's she's preparing us for the, for the worst happening. Your grandmother um, was always the pragmatic sort. I understand. All right, so she she just uh, you know skips along, le leads you to a back office of, of the tavern where Aaron, now sixty four, is uh, doing paperwork, uh, uh, work, working out funds and whatnot. And I just like walk up there, just like Lydia. Aaron sort of lights up. It's like Karna. Hello, dear. How have you been? Oh, Uncle Karna. You know, I, I yeah, I've been all right. Uh, how are you doing? Oh, sprightly as ever, sprightly as you, I hope. I'm doing pretty all, all right, all things considered. I, you know, get, getting on, as you know. Oh, God. Bang my hand. <laughs> Lydia, can you look into that? <laughs> someone, someone broke a, 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 <laughs> so, some silver. So, 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 so someone broke, someone broke some silver. <laughs> silver is so expensive, and, so, and people keep breaking it. <laughs> well, I was, I was just passing through town, and I was... Uh, Wondering if maybe you needed an entertainer for the evening, and if I could perhaps trade that for a place to sleep and perhaps a bite to eat. You know you don't need to, to do something for us to have a place to stay. Yes, but I always like to, you know, give back as much as you've given, to, as much as your family has given to me. And you like to sing a song. I do love to sing. You, you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta sing the big one? You gotta... I, I wrote it about this tavern, didn't I? I thought you wrote it about the glade. It's... It's the glade, yes, but the tavern is the main part. It's beyond the glade. This tavern is the one that was beyond the glade. Oh yeah, I never really listened to the lyrics. Yeah, <laughs> most people don't. They just like the tune. Well, yeah, if, you, if you'd like to play, we're not going to say no, but you, you, of course, have a place to stay if you like. I'll make sure to end it with that very song. You, you have one other friend in town that, that, that you're fairly close to. Would you like to go see her? Yeah, I'd set down some of my travel gear there, uh, and then I'd go wander to, uh, I'm assuming we're talking about the local blacksmith. Yeah, Jenny the blacksmith. But I went ahead and drew her last night for oh, you. She's big, I she's, like she's her. A, she's a big blacksmith lady named Jenny. I like her a lot. You first met her as a young apprentice of... Yeah, my 
my friend. Her tattoo is of a, a orange blossom. Yeah, an orange blossom. In in uh, memory of Delamere. Karna, how you been? How how old is she at this point? Forty five. Okay, so she would have been in her teens or so when she was an apprentice. Yes. Okay. Jenny, how are you? Roan, literally. Yeah, you know, like blacksmithing gets, gets you small. It does. <laughs> I uh, noticed something strange as I came into town. The yeah. the blade. It, it uh, was it kind of in this direction that was pulling me. No. Um. Would you like to make a, a second, like like maybe a perception check to see like where specifically it's like? Let's say it's still tugging a little bit. Yeah. Like I, I'm just kind of just feeling kind of like a throbbing sort yeah. of. Yeah. Sure, I'll, I'll give that another check. That's a nat fucking 20. Boom, Woo! I got the first nat All one right. and the first nat 20. Let's yes. go. <laughs> then, yeah, you know that it's it's pointing directly at a caravan near you. It seemed to be tugging towards that caravan, which I, honestly, I should maybe check that, but I, I, I just wanted to know if you had any insight on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that Sunder? Yeah. Well, um, I'm not a songsmith. I, I can't do what Delaware did, but... She did talk about it, and um, she would talk about Sunder like she was a person. She called her she. Um, I, I remember. And I tried to treat her as such. She might be trying to find herself, kind of. Like, put herself back together. I think that somebody found a piece of Sunder, and that perhaps they're traveling with that caravan. Uh, I, mean, I mean, people sell magical items all the time just for the innate magic in it. Didn't think to scoop the rest of her up as we ran. Yeah, so people might have collected, like, and, and realized the pieces were magic and, and are trying to use the pieces uh, for that magic. Um, pe people use all sorts of sources to power things and whatnot. If you want to put Sunder back together, I'm not sure I can help you with that. You'd need a songsmith to help you do that. But if you get her pieces, that's a start. Well, I suppose I should start by checking that caravan then. But I did want to stop in and Check in on you. I know you set up shop here. Yeah, you know, I'm doing all right. Um, honestly, a lot of work comes in from Port Tariff. Uh, Gotta imagine there's uh, plenty of work in the horseshoes and farm utility department here. Yeah, and, and swords. Um, We've gotten more militants around here. Yeah. Do, can, can you make an insight check on her? I will. Uh, modified 20. Okay. Then, yeah, you can tell, like, she feels really conflicted about she needs to make a living but she's making a living arming the people who destroyed her hometown i'll check back in here later i'll be performing at the tavern later tonight if you want to stop by yeah yeah no i, I wouldn't miss it i would i would you know bid here a uh, bid her adieu and go check out what the fuck's up with this caravan all right so from there i think we'll we'll, we'll switch gears o over to li a little bakering nearby the smell of bread and 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 sugary pastries is, is in the air, and it's early morning, so it, we come into the attic and we see curled up a uh, cat-like, otter-like woman. <laughs> um, Jesse, our next player, would you like to introduce your character? Sure, uh, this is Maud. She's uh, a Shapaloo, which is, like Stefan said, like kind of like an otter cat-like rabbit, also kind of. Creature. Slash uh, Totoro. <laughs> slash Totoro. Like, a, there's a lot rolled into these little guys. Um, you are furry. I am a, I am a furry. She's got, like, purp, like, it's purple, but it's, like, so dark purple that it's basically, like, a dark gray, basically, uh, with white patches and, like, a black bob and, like, super, super wide eyes. Well, Maude is currently uh, asleep in the, in the attic of this bakery until suddenly you hear like a <laughs> but you, 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 you hear the sound of a mule. Okay, she opens her eyes a little bit. She's like, oh, that's it, that is, that's what I wake up to every morning. <laughs> to the braying of to the, the donkey. To the braying. <laughs> to the donkey still scream. So gets up, does a little, like a cat stretch, you know, uh, stretches out. Then she's gonna make her way down, uh, down the stairs. Then, uh, yeah, you go back and, and there's a, a, a little donkey there, a little old donkey there. Oh, <laughs> he's scrubbly too. <laughs> her, her name is Billy. Billy, so cute. Because I know you love this. You you just have the the ability to talk to animals, just full stop. So, <laughs> hell yeah. Good morning. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, oh, I, I know. saw, I saw, I saw a, a smudge, unfamiliar smudge. I know you can't, you can't see well. I don't. So think. I scream. I would too. I understand. 
I am you so are a good smudge, though. You, you're, you're, you're a nice smudge. Oh, thank you, Billy. She's very blonde. That is, <laughs> that is so nice, Billy. Uh, I, I give Billy a little pet. <laughs> it is okay. <sighs> smudges are scary, but you know, some smudges are just friends that we do not uh, know yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure she's equipped to understand the, the idea of, of potential friends <laughs> right now. You know what, Mod isn't either, you know? <laughs> she's more of like, I'll give advice that I don't follow myself, so, you know? She's a hypocrite. Yes, <laughs> that's the word for it. Hippocat. Sorry, I, I, I need to remember the change of the lights. I that's really good. need to remember the change of the that's lights. Fair. All right, so you, you, you've, you've calmed the donkey. <laughs> I, I suppose your day started. That sounds like a saying for something else. I wake up, I calm the I'm donkey, and I go to work. Donkey. <laughs> it's one of my favorite positions, calming the donkey. I gotta love that morning donkey. Mm. Okay, how, how does Maud start her day since she's up now? Well, they don't let Maud work with customers. She's mainly in the back. Okay. Um, so you just head straight to the kitchen, or? Yeah, okay. probably to prepare, um, start doing prep work okay. before the boys get there. You find that that uh, Deb, the owner, is already there. Oh, hello there, Maud. How are you doing today? Uh, what is on the docket today? Well, uh, Mr. Porter asked us to make him some biscuits. Oh, uh, I love making biscuits. Uh, so if you could get started on that, I think I hear some customers out there now. I'm gonna go ahead out there, but uh, you know what to do. Uh, how long do you think you've been you've been at this? Four, five months. Four or five months? Okay, yeah. okay. It's so you, you picked up quickly then. Mm. No, we're only a single D10. Seven. You have 70 bits for money. Give you got me. bits. Thank you for the bits. <laughs> Chad, is this real? <laughs> so Maude has made 70 bits over, over, the, over, the, over the past while. Um, you know, and she's been getting fed and, and a place to sleep, so she hasn't had to worry too much about that. I don't know what that makes your total up to at the moment, but. A lot. So yeah, you're, you're, you're making biscuits then? I'm making biscuits. Then uh, can you roll me, let's see, I think you have proficiency in cooking. So just roll a d20 and plus two and we'll see how well you, you, you make biscuits. 19 plus two. Okay, then you make biscuits really well. You're good at biscuits. Yeah. You're good at making biscuits. Make those biscuits. Officially, it's canon. I make the biscuits. Oh. So as you're as you're making biscuits extremely well, Deb's son Arn comes comes downstairs and, and also washes his hands and, and gets ready to to get some stuff going. Arn is a a, a tall, handsome, like young, younger man, reddish hair, tan skin, like his mother. You know him as someone who you know he's always very polite to you. He's always very kind to you. Um, but he, he's clearly also uncomfortable around you. You yeah, know, I just I yeah hello, good morning. And that's it. Like, kind of just like <laughs> that's flat, your relationship. Not, not like mean, but like not excited either. A after a moment, Arn, Arn like ha gives like a little exasperated sigh, just marches upstairs real quick. You hear some like muffled, like light arguing, and then Arn Arn returns downstairs with uh, Ren, another tall young man with like dark, like tan skin and, and reddish hair. He's younger. He's like in his late teens, and he is uh, he, he's a very moody young man, less uncomfortable around you. He just treats you like 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 one of the family, but he doesn't treat the family super well. <laughs> but he does treat you like just one of them. So so there is that. Sick, yeah. As he gets ready to wash his hands and, and get ready, ready to work, Arn gets on him about a bandage on his hands. Like, Arn, take off the bandage when you wash your hands. And he's like, no, I, I, no. And he, he refuses. Would you like to make a perception check on? Yes, 15 plus three. Perception. So you can tell, like, he's not acting like his hand is really that injured, but he is covering up that hand. Mm. So yeah, Wrench is like, leave me alone, I'm fine. And and he just starts making various baked goods, whatever's on the list for today. After a little bit, Deb comes in the back and, and approaches you and is like, okay, so uh, the Cullens are having another wedding. At, at the mention of the Cullens, you see Ar Arn's mood gets a little darker. If you like, you can make it. You can like make a history check on that and see if you know why. But yes, that'd be great. Okay. Eight. Okay. You know that there is history. <laughs> mm. Seems like there is history. Yeah, I don't I, know what, but there is uh, something going on there. Something's going on there. <laughs> and that's what you know. <laughs> I am making the biscuits. I do not look at anyone. And they, they want another cake. Um, and due to the circumstances, we will need to send someone into town for it. Maud, would you would you be willing to make make the trek again? Uh, yes, yes, of course. 
thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll get you some money, I'll get you some food. Um, and there's actually a caravan in town, and you can travel with them, and that'll be a little safer than going on your own. Um, and, and of course, you'll be, you'll be taking Billy with you to, to take some of the heavier things. We need flour, we need chocolate, uh, we need sugar. Um, they want a big, big chocolate cake. We, oui. I can do. Does Maud know how to write? No. <laughs> okay. Maud she is just Ill- remembers it. <laughs> Maud is illiterate. Okay. Yeah, she starts saying cho- uh, chocolate, sugar, flour, chocolate. Then sugar, roll me flour. an intelligence check. <laughs> To see how well you remember. All right, plus two. Plus two. Nine plus two is eleven. Okay, you can remember that. You can remember yeah. three things with a, with a DC of ten. Like oh, can't <laughs> Deb's going to give you another twenty bits to 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 buy supplies with. Fuck yeah. Uh, Mods rolling so far. <laughs> those are those are for buying ingredients. Mm. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> uh, let's see how much food she gives you. She's a mom. She might give you too much. Let's see. Okay, no, she's she's being practical. She gives you a pound of food. Okay, for the trip. <laughs> a pound of food will basically feed you for a day. What kind of food is it? Bread. Awesome. <laughs> Your yes. carbs, the you, best thing yes. for anyone. You animal. have bread. <laughs> Maud has bread, and she's got bread. You know, you know what they say? No, that's not a colloquialism here, Maud. It is something uh, me and my, my sister said to each other. Okay, so it's a, it's a bog cat thing. Okay. Oui. Bog cat is just a colloquialism for Shapaloo for the non Shapaloo people. <laughs> it's not necessarily <laughs> offensive, it's just not the word you use. Yeah, yeah. It's raining good out there. Mm-hmm. Non canonical. So Ren, Ren actually speaks up a bit and is like, uh, I, I don't think. Um, maybe we should like wait a day to do that. I, I don't think Maud should travel with the caravan. He, it's weird that he's speaking up. Do you want to make an insight check on that or? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 16 total. Okay, okay. So you can tell he's being shifty. He's being weird about this. He's for some reason, does not want you traveling with that caravan. I want an opportunity to like talk to him alone, but like everyone's okay. in the kitchen you, you, right you, now, right? Yeah, you, you, but you can find an opportunity. I'll, I'll just say that happens. Okay, great. What? What's, what's going on? How are you uh, doing? I'm I'm doing I'm doing okay. Uh, why why why? Uh, do you have something you would like to talk to me about? I just don't don't think that caravan's good. Um, I think it's bad. It's a bad caravan with bad people in it. Why? What, what do you mean? I've heard bad things about that caravan. Right. I'm really changing this accent. I'm gonna lean into surfer you now. <laughs> hey, all right. <laughs> Whoa. What did what did you hear? That they're bad people, and and you know, just you probably don't want to hang out with bad people. Uh, so you know, whatever, just whatever. Get off my case. <laughs> Gosh. I, uh, I. Thank you. I think I can handle myself, but I appreciate. It. <sighs> okay. Yeah. I'm just fine. Whatever. Is there anything near the table? Is there like a table or something? She wants to grab something a little bit with a little bit of heft to kind of throw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll say there's something you can grab them and, and throw. <laughs> okay, let's say let's say you, you, you grab like a, like a nice solid wooden bowl or something, and then just say, "Oops!" and like <laughs> <laughs> like just tosses it in the direction right next to his hand that he's not. Can using. you make a slight of hand check for me? Sure. <laughs> Right towards the bandit chain. To see how oops it looks. Uh, do I have to add anything to that? <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. You, you should of, be good at that. Sleight of hands. Oh, that's there. an exact it's plus eight. eight. Wow. <sighs> this is going to be the best. Um, oh, well. It's a nine. So it's a nine. 17. Nine, 17. Thank you. That's still pretty good. All right. So he believes it's a mistake. Um, so I guess he goes to catch it. I guess we'll see how well he does it. <laughs> Let's see. That's a two. He don't catch nothing. Damn. <laughs> that slips right out of his hands. And, then, and there was something in there, too. <laughs> <laughs> Ma's not even looking at it. She just looks just like right everywhere. It's like, God! Oh! What's up? He kicks a fucking table. <laughs> God! Are you okay? No! Do you want me? There's flour to- everywhere. Oh. Now we have to clean it up. Oh no! Fuck! <laughs> How terrible! Can you roll a deception check with that with, the, with that delivery? <laughs> deception. Oh, no. Yeah. Two. Thank you. I'll get it eventually. Two plus six, or is that? Yeah, that's six. six. He looks. He, you did it. On purpose. What's your problem? Tell me your secret. <laughs> 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 oh, 
<laughs> Tell me your knowledge! <laughs> and then she points! <laughs> she cues. Are you going for persuasion or intimidation? That's a good question. She's just not good with people. I think it's I think it's persuasion. I don't think she's trying to be mean. She's just like, I want knowledge now, please. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> it's persuasion. Then you make a persuasion check. Okay. With disadvantage. <laughs> oh, also, you're you're owed some inspiration <sighs> because you failed a roll. Yippee! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, now you have your own. Thank you. I can look at it. I'm looking at it. You can't see it. You and don't you, get to see it. Yet. You may just spend it now. Who knows? Okay, let's find out. Oh, five. <laughs> and now, now you roll again because you have disadvantage. You can still roll a fourth. You three, can roll two, worse. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, it's the five. Not bad. It's <laughs> the five. Just a five. Okay. He's like, leave me alone. And he just storms upstairs. Now you have to clean it up. <laughs> that mutter, mutters in French. Can, can in Chapelou words. <laughs> the the Chapelou, it's like uh, it's like based in. What did you tell Chappie me? Is the French. Um, so we were talking about. You were like, I wanted, you know. Shoppy to be based in French, but you don't have to. And I was like, I'm doing that now, immediately. Yes. Uh, so I'm just going to make up French words. And good, that's just. Good. And those will be canon Shoppy words. Omelette yes. de croissant. Yeah. Okay, and, so, uh, so you, 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 you mutter in Shoppy. Yeah. And cleans. And she's like, in her head, she's like, oh, why didn't that work? <laughs> With that, um, I think we're going we're gonna to move, move on over to our final player and our final pl player character. There's there's a man in 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 the town square, just sort of observing. Quinn, would you please describe your character? Got to get into. Yes, so uh, a rather tall young man, uh, most notable for the bandana he's wearing over his eyes, uh, but he also is armed with a kind of a sh short chest plate with chainmail covering his other. Uh, vulnerable areas, uh, but otherwise lightly dressed. Definitely looks like he's he's supposed to be on the road or just came in off the road. Uh, and yeah, at the moment he'd just be uh, leaning back, people watching, waiting for any sort of opportunity to arise. So are, is there anything in particular you're observing? Uh, mainly the traffic coming in from the gate. Okay. Can you roll a perception check? Wrong. Get ready cuts. for a sound. That was a clunk. 17. A 17. With your 17, you do notice when, when a caravan comes in being pulled by a cockatrice <laughs> with a harness and, and a muzzle. It's the only caravan being pulled with by this creature. Um, <laughs> I want it to be my friend. <laughs> well, maybe you'll you'll learn its I, name. I'll figure it out. <laughs> they've rolled in and, they, and they've stopped like, like in, in town. If they're just kind of idling uh, by the time they get into town, I, I, I'll just approach them. Um, as you as you approach, you see that someone else is also approaching. Um, I take advantage of the fact that my eyes are covered to kind of just stare at him approach. <laughs> kind of like just more you more can, interested you, in the oddity uh, of it than anything else. Yeah. Does, uh, can you roll a percentage check to see if you notice if he's staring? Like, it, it's hard to notice, but. I, I would notice that there's a bandaged eyed person standing there, right? If you roll a religion check, you can see if you would know what that signifies. So the perception check to see if I'm staring could it be a disadvantage because there's yeah, I would no... Say, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take so. disadvantage on that. Uh, for religious signification, that is a modified 20. So you would know that 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 this this sort of get up implies that this is a member of the cult of Algus, which is a, a sort of not non-magical cult that believes that if you let people see your eyes, they are, you are giving them some sort of power over yourself. Uh, so, so you know that it's a religious thing. You know that he's not blind. He's just covering his eyes. Are um, they in any way related to the uh, primary human religion? No, um, they, they're they're tolerated by the church because they're not they don't do magic. Gotcha. You might get a threatening aura from him, but he's tolerated by his his religion's tolerated by the church. All right. Now my deception or now my perception with disadvantage to see that I, it, whether or not I am being stared at. Uh, lowest one is a 16. You, you've you had enough stares throughout your life to, to clock when you're being stared at, even by someone who you can't see their eyes. So I, so I give you kind of like a, a polite, you know, good day, as I uh, kind of like skip merrily past you. 
And you're, you're both at the caravan. Yeah, I'm approaching, but I'm like directly following wherever my uh, scabbard is currently. <laughs> Hello, I say to him like a little side mamba shuffle. It probably becomes more obvious as you pass him and he's more like, <laughs> Good day. <laughs> and I'm just like, hello. Where are we going? Where are we going? All right, show me. Lead yeah, me. you just like sort of, you just, and you just sort of bump up against the the the, the caravan. Boom, boom, and boom. Like, okay, that's yeah. where you want to be. Okay, what would but, the characteristics be of the people that are employed in this caravan? Would you say? Firstly, you notice a sort of intense-looking woman with graying red hair, very very strong-looking, scarred, with a sword by her side. Another kind of like Weasley, greasy-looking looking guy, kind of nervous, wide-eyed, um, also a sword by his side. And then two artisans of some sort, one with dark skin and, and blondish hair, and another with very pale skin and sort of like brown hair. Gotcha. Can I make a general kind of insight check to kind of gauge their role within the caravan. Sure, yeah, go for it. 21. You, you can tell that the people with the swords are, are, are guards. And are right? probably and, eyeing me a little more suspiciously as I'm mombing towards their yeah. wagon. Yeah, one nervously, one just very calmly but but warily. And the other and the other two are, are the people who are hiring these people. All right, then I would travel to the two that are hiring as I okay. notice that this wagon is my destination. I will say with 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 that, that high of an insight check as well, you can also tell that these two are like a married couple, like like or at least a couple that are together. Um, they 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 act like a couple, and you you know what that looks like. Uh, so I just kind of like knock on like the side of the wagon as I approach them. Uh, the 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 tall pale one um, just sort of glares at you. He's like, "What do you want?" Well, I'm I'm very curious. I noticed the uh, uh, what I know what a cockatrice is. If you want to roll a check for it, you can. Uh, 18. Then There's yes, you know what a cockatrice is, yeah. and you know why it's muzzled, which is that if it bites somebody, um, they will turn to stone. <laughs> yeah. I, I noticed <laughs> you, you have a very peculiar wagon, and uh, I'm, I'm just wondering, what, what sort of goods are you trading? The tall, pale one just sort of uh, looks over t expectantly to the, the other one who looks a little more personable, the, the, one, the shorter one with dark skin and blondish hair. I, I, just, I just have like a very friendly smile on my face. Uh, like putting out just like genuine curiosity. I will also note at this point, I've been following him. So I, I I'm, assume I'm, you're yeah, observing. I'm, 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 you're, sh you're shadowing. Yeah, no, I haven't said anything, but I'm like five feet behind him at this point. Seeing as you're armed, then uh, the, the one of the bodyguards, uh, the, the 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 woman who's then like, I guess I, I guess yeah, I, a little I more standoffish. My, yeah, I put myself in a pose to put people at ease. Like I'm trying to look like I'm not aggressively <laughs> interested in. This. I'm definitely gonna have you roll a performance check for that. Fair enough. <laughs> Uh, Seventeen. Not bad. Seventeen. Okay. So yeah, you just sort of like, like just have like a lazy little look. I, I feel like at this point, like I kind of cross my arm to the point where the shield is just more kind of just in front of me. <laughs> the woman bodyguard is still like the one who's clearly in charge is uh, eyeing you, but like is is you know not not actively aggressive. I just look at her and nod to the point where it's like kind of a mutual acknowledgement of yes, I know I'm armed. I'm also not trying to be a threat. She just she smokes. She looks at you. <laughs> So yeah, I, I, I just like genuinely like kind of turned to one that's a little more personable. Just very curious about what sort of wares you're trading in. Uh, it's it's a very interesting caravan you have here with a very lovely beastie pulling it. Is that a cockatrice? Yes, it is. Um, Beautiful my, creature. H hello, uh, my, my name's Beck. Uh, Karna of the Dancing Air. Lovely to make your acquaintance, Beck. And uh, we're jewelers. Um, jewelers? We just, we, we go around, we make jewelry, we sell it uh, all, all over the, the archipelago. Now, this is a very strange question. Uh, I'll just come clean with you. This sword at my hilt, it's never done this before, but, but it appears to be reacting to some of your cargo. And, and, and I'm curious if you have any raw materials that might look like, you know, chipped silver. Um, can you roll a charisma check for me? Do 21. 21, okay. She and her uh, her partner um, eye each other real quick and it's like, it's it's not necessarily safe to discuss this sort of thing publicly. Um, I look around, uh, specifically back towards the <laughs> strange man in the <laughs> They are wary that there's a stranger who has not introduced himself. No, I just, just standing. Yeah. No, I, like, I like the image of just like she says that, and then everyone just 
<laughs> Turn. <laughs> this obviously suspicious person covering his eyes. He rolled a seventeen, so he's not super oh. suspicious. He's but not. he's still he had he's looking and not introducing himself. <laughs> there's there's only so much that uh, seventeen can give you. I I was hoping to get back to Port Tarifa for the end of the day, and I just thought safety in numbers. Yes, we 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 are going to Port Port Tarif, Um, and if you don't mind. I know of a safe place in Port Tarif to discuss this sort of business. I, here, I, there, you don't know who to trust. I know uh, plenty of people to trust, but... I don't. Very well. And I'd say right around then is maybe when <laughs> Maud comes up with a donkey and a wheelbarrow. This way, Billy. This way. Okay. There's so many... I know. ...new smudges. There are so many smudges. When she is talking to the donkey, is she making donkey sounds or is she speaking normally? <laughs> That's a good question. She is straight up making donkey sounds. So, so, so as I'm having this you conversation, know, you know, cats mimic yeah. other animals. I guess I can make a rain check. It. Pretty goes at his hold, 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 hold. Yeah, it may like you couldn't tell I was looking at you. I'm definitely looking at her. <laughs> yeah, this is the, like, everyone's to, to, looking. To Karna, this is now just like a very marvelous day. There's so many <laughs> interesting things happening right have now. Have you ever met a Shapalu? Uh, yes, you have. I'm gonna say I, you. I've traveled so yeah. much. There, yes. There's enough Shapalu running around. I, I, I can prob I can probably just say, oh, Shapalu, bonjour. <laughs> Weirdly, given your backstory, I think Karna has met more Shapalu of many different kinds than you. Yeah, probably. But I hear him and I say, Bon, bonjour. <laughs> That's about the extent of what I know, but I, I, I just needed to greet you. <laughs> Hello, I need kick. I don't think we can do much about that. I uh, travel to, to the city. Oh, you want to travel with us? We. Oui. Uh, sure, more the merrier. Um, our guards can be a little, a little uh, touchy, so try and not touch the, the wagon. But uh, I will not touch your guards. That that's good too. At the mention of them and noticing and knowing that Karna is now, you know, entreating himself to travel with them, he actually wanders over to the guards. Hello, my name is Karna, Karna Freehorn, Karna of the Dancing Air. Some know me. And I, I just kind of like hold out my hand in a friendly gesture towards which, them. Which one are you talking to? Uh, whichever one would have been closer, the one that looks at least friendlier would be the young man. Hello. Hi. I, it seems we'll be traveling with you for the evening. Yeah? Yep. I'm Frog. Hello, Frog. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. And who's this lovely young lady? <laughs> you don't even know my name. Mysterious. I like it. I smile. <laughs> Mm. I just kind of like raised my eyebrows at that. <laughs> terrible noise you just made. <laughs> oh, my noise was terrible. <laughs> As a response, worse. Yes. I was inside the frog once. Oh. I, tu I turn. Oh, this is going to be delightful. <laughs> I run back to the tavern to grab my stuff. Okay. And I, I, I inform them that I'm going to have to make a rain check on my stop, but uh, an emergency has called me away, but I shall return. Okay. We hit the road with, yeah. with the wagon. Wait, have we established people. that you're trying? Yeah, you 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 oh, signed yeah, up I as security. You, you, yeah. yeah, yeah, you did ask. Yeah. So yeah, we're we're in the, we're in the forest now. We're we're heading off to Port Port Tarf. It's about a half a day's journey. Is there anything you guys? Carno would pass the time just kind of like playing like a jaunty tune, just kind of like playing an instrumental while mm -hmm. we're uh, traveling down the road. I'd be making conversation with. Uh, whoever's steering the wagon. That would probably be Kira, who is the tall, pale woman. You would have learned that this, I think. Yeah, I'd, I'd be making conversations with her, like, you know, talking about, you know, I would ask the cockatrice's name. Her name's Beatrice. Beatrice the cockatrice. Yes. Beck thought it was cute. It is? Yes, it is. Because she's adorable and she's great. Does Beatrice think so? <laughs> there's something sinister to her. <laughs> the eyes. Yes, everything she does is adorable and it's great. And <laughs> shut up. <laughs> As you wish. I, I continue playing. Uh, Beatrice the Cockatrix is now like kind of mixing around in my head, churning with rhyme. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep myself like busy. It looks like I'm sketching the cock, uh, Beatrice into a small notebook, okay. like this one. But eventually, as I run out of material for Beatrice, I just keep finding myself looking at Maud. And Maud can definitely tell. Okay. As a goat man just kind of like strolls up to you. Bonjour again. Bon, bon, bonjour. So what brought you on the road today? 
I uh, require a cake. Don't we all? <laughs> Do we? I suppose at some point or another. Everybody's got a sweet tooth, am I right? I do not know. Well, do you like sweet things? You must. You travel with such a charming little companion. I, I kind of like, uh, can I do an animal handling? Uh, like kind of scratch the little donkey behind the ears? Sure, she's a little skitterish. Yeah, that's why, that's why I ask about animal handling first and foremost. <laughs> Fuck yeah, as a 19 on the die, 23. I, I have very skilled hands. <laughs> yeah, you hear her, her just quietly, quietly go, nice smudge. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I turn as I hear the donkey bray quietly. Like, What'd she say? Well, she she likes you. Oh, I like you too, little one. What's <laughs> their name? Uh, Billy. Billy. She is very old. Uh, and I turn to the uh, blinded sketch artist. Very talented sketch artist for someone with obscured eyes. You you, uh, you get used to it. I imagine so. What brings you on the road? I seek to expand uh, adherence to the creed. Uh, listening to his accent, is it one that I've ever heard before? Being as widely traveled as I have. Um, let's say you history and you performance and we'll see if you know what he's going for and if he's doing it well. Okay. Well, that's a nat 20. This wow. dice, I tell you. Six. <laughs> okay. You cannot place this accent. You've been all over and you've <laughs> never heard this accent in your life. It's a very distinct accent. I don't believe, where do you hail from? No, northern territories. Yeah, with, with my natural 20 in history, having lived a, at least a good chunk of what he would consider history. Uh, it, it is not any region you've ever been to. Well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bust him on it. I, I'm not gonna bust his balls on it too hard. It's like, oh, what city specifically? I've been up north a few times. To uh, head off any polite conversation, I shall tell you, I am an orthodox creed adherent. Um, we wish to obscure ourselves, our true selves, to prevent exploitation. So, I. If I were to tell you where I was from, I could guarantee you it would be a lie. A mystery wrapped in an enigma that's telling me that it's mystery. I like it. A spool to unravel. The creed, a... the creed only seeks to protect the soul. We don't seek to uh, injure with our mysteries. Could everybody here roll a perception check for me? Uh, that is another 14 for me. Uh, 18. 11. Have we said your character's name? Uh, if asked, I would have said Martin. Martin? Okay. But yeah, no, I don't think it's come up yet. <laughs> okay. You notice that there is a symbol carved into a nearby tree. Shortly before noticing that there is another tree downed in front of the road in front of you. This. Halt. Halt. <laughs> I just look back at the cart and <laughs> Yeah, we know when to stop when there's something in the road. Thank you. But the tree. There's a... Yeah, I know there... Not that tree, that tree. There is a tree. There's... I know there's a tree. There's lots of trees. I'm a, this is an ambush. Ambush territory. That's not a bush, it's a tree. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I... Roll initiative! <laughs> there's not an ad here. But, but there but could, could be. be. My name is Jimmy Advertisements. My family invented advertisements and I want to advertise for you. Think about it. All your favorite things, they're, they're advertisements. Chester Cheetah, I bet you didn't know, but he's an advertisement. Joe Camel, that's an advertisement too. And I love him. I think it's wrong that they made Joe Camel illegal. I think cigarettes should be made appealing to children. I think that is morally okay. Everybody needs good advertisements. You know who didn't have good advertisements? That's right, you don't, because they didn't advertise! So don't be like those nameless dummies. You should hire me to promote your product and or service. Sometimes people ask me, hey Jimmy, did you change your surname to advertisements just so you could claim that your family invented advertisements? And I hurt them. The urge, they keep sending me mail. They keep telling me, hey, you haven't paid your taxes. Give us money. And I, so I gotta make more money. So please, I need you to give me a product and or service to promote 
and pay me to do it. Otherwise, daddy's going to have to go away for a while. And Charlie, if, if, you, if you're watching this, I'm, I'm sorry. I wish I could be there. And I could be if someone pays me to advertise for them. Come on! Dungeons and Dragons is how Satan gets into your mind, soul, and brain. But I'll let you get back to it anyway, because, uh, you know, that's between you and God. Uh, so, uh, that's it. Goodbye. We're in combat. We are. And knowing you, you probably have like a theme playing now. Oh yeah, for sure. Wow, this music is so good. We're well, listening no, to it right now. Where can you find it? I don't know. Somewhere. <laughs> I, I looked at so many virtual tabletop things and I was not happy with any of them. So I, I booted up Blender instead. <laughs> you, you made a cus- God damn. Oh my God. Dude, wow. This is so cool. What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Whatever works. They're all color coordinated. <laughs> and I can see me. It's oh fun. my gosh, and you can do, oh my. Uh, what the hell? What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> That's what so the fuck detail? is wrong with you? What, there, there's elevation? <laughs> and Billy's here. Billy's here. And there's Beatrice. <laughs> ah, yeah, Beatrice! <laughs> Cockatrice. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. So, yeah. I killed you, I wasn't talented happy. piece of shit. I wasn't happy with anything else. Get on this level, Roll20, come on. Man. This is so cool! But it means we're gonna have like a fight every three sessions. Yeah, I, I imagine there are gonna be like some smaller scale. My planned fights will have the maps. Uh, I'm never excited is, for fights is, though, and this is awesome. I'm excited this, for fights now. This is just for you to flex, like. <laughs> I just, I wanted something that it with good presentation. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay, is this the thing that you asked? Oh, yeah. you like, I figured out a thing, do you want me to tell you or do you want it to be a surprise? And we were like, surprise. Yeah, yeah. that was the one. This, this, this is, was the thing. fuck you. <laughs> yeah, no, so, so you see, it's not just four white guys playing tabletop, we have this. <laughs> we have this. <laughs> some guys burst out of the fucking forest. These fucking guys. These fucking guys, look at them. Some masked guys with knives coming out, coming out of the forest, they all got hoods on, and there's another guy here who's clearly a little different with, with an eye patch, red that hair. One's special. <laughs> he might have slightly more health. <laughs> he's, he's got a scar in his oh, face. Shit. He looks far more threatening than the others. Not that the others don't look threatening. They are brandishing knives at you. Oh, new friends! <laughs> <laughs> this is and how yeah. I got my first job. <laughs> and yeah, the, the guy who clearly looks more threatening is going to try and rip back off of off of the wagon. I'm very visual and I'm realizing how much I'm just in the dark okay. normally during combat. I'm just like, something's happening, I'm sure. He definitely succeeds with a nat 20. Yeah. So, so she's gonna, throws her down here. That's all he's gonna do right now. He's not trying to kill anybody. Next turn is actually gonna be Frogs, who is going to try to shove Karna out of the way. Shove me? He's gonna try to shove you. Am but, I am I in danger or am I just getting tackled? For you're no getting reason? thrown at least five feet is, is the goal. Okay, I'm, get, I'm getting so shoved. That's a contested strength roll, I guess. Is this an aggressive maneuver? Yes. <laughs> okay, contested athletics? Yep. Well, that's a nat one. I didn't see this coming. That makes what? sense. Okay. Oh, hey, new fro- <laughs> <laughs> Fro! Frog! Frog! Why? Frog! We had a thing! Your name was Frog, and I said hello! You take three damage. Okay. Next turn belongs to Kern, the lady bodyguard. She she takes a swing at that guy there, but uh, fails. What an idiot. Kira, she notices that Beck has been attacked. Not happy about it. Also not a combatant, but she will make a move to, to try and kick the bad man. She manages to nail him in the face and do one damage. Which brings us to the bandits. Man, everyone rolled better initiative than us. I was about to say, we rolled. <laughs> yeah, you guys rolled really badly. We well, I mean, they, they, are amb they are ambushing us. This guy here is gonna, is gonna take his turn. She just swung at him, so he's the one who makes it clear that these guys are not just bandits because he waves his hands. He shoots some sort of blast of energy at Kern. He <laughs> manages to just sort of graze her with the blast, only, only doing one damage. Uh, this blast, does it have a particular elemental look to it? I'm happy to tell you that it's it's force damage. Okay. Karna, at least, might be able to, like, recognize a little bit of that. Everyone else, like, you're, you're probably not used to seeing magic. So, Quinn, it is your turn, finally, after oh, all these NPCs. Yes. All right, so, 
As far as Martin is concerned, a bunch of noise happened behind him. He looks back and it's chaos. So as seeing the two people come out of the woods from his side, he is going to pull out a javelin from his uh, kind of his cloak mm -hmm. and he's going to throw it at the bandit coming out closest to Maud. <laughs> not in that one, but it sucks. Plus four, seven. Yeah, seven's not gonna hit, sorry. All right, so that javelin flies flies Ooh, completely shit. wide, probably impaling a three. Uh, and then I, uh, Martin will pull out his sword and get to the bandit that's closest to him, uh, the one Kern's facing. He'll get to Kern's right side, essentially helping back her up. Jesse, it's Maud's turn. What's Maud gonna do? Maud is going to draw her short sword. As I leap over Billy, I say, excuse me. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, Billy is like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> plus dex, plus, uh, that would be six, so this is 21. 21 to hit, then yeah. absolutely. A cube. That's so 10. 10. Dead. Nice. 10 damage is pretty good. Yes. Uh, if you haven't seen me in a campaign before, I welcome math help. So <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> I would be here all day if I was doing math by myself. That bandit looks pretty hurt. And that bandit like actually like cries out like, ah, fuck. Uh, and can you roll a perception check for me? Ooh, yes. Oh, not one. <laughs> this is a fucking person. That's all you know. Oh, this is a person. And you know you want to kill them. Mm, I want to kill them. <laughs> You've never wanted to kill someone more in your life. This, this sure is a person. They're actually going to move away from you. Oh, and, you get an attack and, of opportunity. And you get an attack of opportunity for, 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 for them doing that. So you awesome. roll the d20 again. This is your choice, but you're essentially hitting them as they move away from you. 12. So 18 to hit. I'm pretty sure, yes, that, that does hit. So roll damage, unless you don't want to hit them, but that's okay. I'll do it. That's another d6 plus. So it's one plus. Four is five. Then this bandit is now incredibly hurt. Oh, they, they look already on death's door. Fucked up. They're going to continue to move and decide to move in on Kern instead of fighting you. I will kill anyone who is a threat to Billy. Okay. No one hurt my donkey. He still has his attack, so he's gonna make an attack on Kern and, and see what happens. That's a nat 20, so not only does he attack, he crits, Doubles the dice. And he's just attacking with his knife at the moment. He's he's a little little shaken. So now Kern is looking fairly hurt. Not quite as bad as that guy does who just attacked her, but she's not looking good. Karna's turn. Hooray! What's Karna gonna do? Karna stands up. I, I kind of dust myself off when I pull out my loot. I think everyone needs to calm down. Hush, little lamb, close your eyes and go to sleep. It's not time to fight. Time to greet the Sandman, meet your sleepy time. Can I borrow some D8s? <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is happening with I am casting sleep on okay. everybody, uh, on all of the bad guys within 20 feet of me, and I'm casting it at level two, which means I need uh, seven D8. We're giving you our power. Basically, what's going to happen is I'm going to roll this out, give you the total number. From the lowest health to the highest health, they start to fall asleep, depending on who has the least amount of health to who has the most amount of health. Okay. All right, that's uh, 8, 16, 24, uh, 30, 34, 36. Uh, Mod's just staring. Like, what, uh, <laughs> what is so happening? So up, up to 43 health pool. <laughs> you, you get the two bandits and frog. They are asleep. Okay, so those three are asleep, the leader is still awake, and that guy way down there is still awake. So, yeah. all three of them, out of combat. Oh my yeah, god. They will be asleep <laughs> for the next 10 rounds unless they are attacked or awoken by a comrade. Gotcha, okay. Fuck yeah, that rules. I will then use my bonus action to uh, look to, I guess I never truly got her name. Kern? Yeah, Kern. I never got Kern's name. You have a hard time hiring, but you're doing a wonderful job. You'll see as like this moat of energy just kind of starts to circle around her, giving her a uh, bardic inspiration. Okay. And whatever she decides to use that on, it will have a different effect because of my subclass. Gotcha. So yeah, she just she just feels a little a little more assured. A little more confident of in what, yeah, a little more assured of victory and a little more confident in whatever ne like next move she's going to make or whatever she, she decides. She she wasn't to use feeling on. sure because she's 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 struggling a bit. That's my turn. Next, it's Billy's turn. Billy! Billy's gonna go, ah! And that's her turn. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Billy! 
And mom's gonna say, you're okay. Everything is okay. <laughs> look, they're sleeping. Look, they are sleeping, but don't open your eyes. But they are sleeping, so look, but don't look. <laughs> and next it's the person who rolled the worst, which is the final bandit. This dude is gonna try to attack Maud. And let's see how it goes. Your AC is 15, I believe. Yeah. Well, luckily, he cannot hit you. It's another one of those like forceful energy bolts. You are not hit, but you are now aware that he tried to hit you. <laughs> like when I activated my taser the other day to see if it still worked. I didn't touch anyone with it, but I got it two years ago and I was like, hmm, what if it works? And I buzzed it and all, it was like a lightning crack. And both my cats were like, Pfft. Well, yeah, th those things are loud. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. I've never <laughs> done it before. It's, it's, it's part of the deterrent. You own a taser and you don't know what a taser's like. Right, I mean, I didn't, I was like, I'll just trust it when it happens. But then I was like, it doesn't work. Just. <laughs> I was like, wow, that would have hurt. You haven't killed yourself on accident. <laughs> this dude, he's gonna try to throw Kira off the wagon now. He's just got a thing about him. And he succeeds. So Kira is now prone <laughs> and thrown off the wagon as well. Thrown and prone. He uses action. Uh, so now he's going to jump onto the wagon as his movement. Is Beatrice just standing there confused? Beatrice is, is, is will do what she's told. Yep. <laughs> Kern's turn. And Kern is absolutely going to stab the person who just stabbed her even though he's asleep. It's just funny that you're like, take my strength. And she's like, <laughs> Okay, she does five damage to the downed bandit. Definitely getting it at a point where it's making death saving throws. Oh my God. So his next turn will be trying not to die. So he was sleeping and now he's dying. Now he's dying. Okay, well. A more violent kind of sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> Beck, she's going to come over here to assist uh, her, you know, partner and then get them both away. Uh, next is Kira's turn who, yeah, will we'll use her movement to get up and then will be held back by by Beck from- Let me at him, let yeah. me at him. It, it is Martin's turn. <laughs> Martin will run for the wagon and is he still close enough where I could grab him? You can grapple. Okay, um, I'll forgo that this turn. I'll just, uh, as I'm reaching out for him, uh, it's gonna kind of sound like a deep guttural, almost like a Benny Jesuit voice as I just shout, freeze. Uh, that's gonna be me casting command on him to freeze. Uh, okay. He rolls a wisdom saving throw. All right. If he rolls a 12 or higher, he beats it. He got exactly a 12. Damn. <sighs> then I shall stand there menacingly <laughs> and end my turn. Next turn is Maud's. Well, she thinks she's defending Billy and doesn't understand this band. It's probably coming for Maud. Uh, so can, I, can she go down to meet that? Yeah, you, yeah, you can get to the corner tile next to them. Yeah. All right, so yeah, you were in front of them, you were in attacking range. Cool, I will. 11. Okay, do you, do you add anything to that? Ooh, what would I add? Your dexterity, dexterity and your proficiency, so you add Both? six. So oh, turns into six. Oh, that's why go. the numbers are there. Okay, yes, so that's, that's four, <laughs> and that's two. I have to include that now. You add six. I have to include, that's why the numbers it's are a, there. It's a 17 to hit, Stefan. <laughs> it's a 17 to hit, then that hits. Yay! <laughs> now you roll your d6 and add four. Three plus four is seven. All right, so you do seven damage. This, guy, this guy's hurt. Now the next turn belongs to the one making death saving throws. <laughs> that was a one. He's on death's door. Yeah. He is almost definitely going to die. I feel it's, bad. It's a coin flip now. Mod does not, <laughs> but I feel bad. So now it's Karna's turn. I'm going to run down to the corner there and essentially headbutt his ankles with my horns. 19 to hit this person. Okay, well that hits. All right, their ankles take six points of bludgeoning damage. And with my bonus action, I look to Martin. I'm saying, you're doing great, friend. Keep going. And you also get a bardic inspiration. A, a lovely tuned little, like, you, you hear just like a kind of swore, like kind of circle around your head. I can't do this. I would like you to roll either perception or insight, your choice on whether or not you recognize that this is magic. It's 18. So you know this is magic. That's all. Hmm. <laughs> Very loaded. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I'm conflicted by this, but you feel, you're filled with confidence about it though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to let Billy roll a perception roll real quick. Ooh, okay. Is it always with disadvantage or do they just have mega negatives? <laughs> She's actually using her sense of smell. Oh, okay so. then. <laughs> I smell blood. <laughs> that would be the primary smell. She rolled 
a 15, which is oh. enough. So she's actually going to walk up to this one right here. The, one, the one that's dying. And cry harder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! This is my smudge! That You heard her say that. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Well, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I, the player has just inferred what that means. Karna I knows don't know. Nothing. I can't hear what, what. Only Maud has heard that. Explains why an NPC is making death saves. I, I, I'm I'm trying to give you a chance. <laughs> the bandit on on the on the bottom left near Maud is is gonna attack next. He is going to hit Maud with with another like one of those concussive energy blasts and gonna deal you seven force damage. Oh, you have 17 health remaining. 17 health? Thank mm -hmm. you. How do you do math so fast? My brain. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> math is stored There's in the brain. There's an insinuation there. <laughs> math is stored in the brain. Piss is stored in the balls. <laughs> math is stored in the brain. Some New t-shirt, now available at sharkrobot.com. Reacting to Karna having headbutted him in the shins, he's going, fuck! <laughs> and he's going to shoot something at you now. He's going to shoot me. He's gonna Pulls shoot gun. you with something. Let's see what he what he He's tries. got a fucking gun! Roll. He definitely hits you. Well, what did he roll? 14 plus 7? Then yes. <laughs> that will hit me. Nine points of force damage. That hurts. And then he's going to use his bonus action to just yeah. Well, if he moves away, does that That is an attack of opportunity. Attack of opportunity from he and Karna? Sure, yeah. Martin would focus on the wagon, especially the wheel up front. That he, that's probably right. Okay, so you're gonna aim for a wheel. Yeah. I would probably like reel back from that, and as he starts moving forward, it would almost be kind of like an incidental attack of opportunity. But I'd throw my head back into like where his knee would probably be at this point. Okay, so you're so, looking. So to, I'm gonna give this motherfucker a limp. You're, for you're a while. looking to get him. Martin will try to. will use his uh, other javelin, and he'll actually just jam it into the spokes of the wheel to try and keep it from turning. Okay, then both of you roll to hit. And 19 plus 1 is, oh wait, uh, plus proficient. It doesn't matter, I rolled over a 20. What do you think the AC on a wagon wheel is? <laughs> As it's moving, let's, let's say 12. This is 9 by itself, plus 2 is 11, and then I'll spend an inspiration to make it a 12 and hit the AC. Okay, then, 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 you, then you both get to hit. But go ahead and roll that d6. A th one. Okay. A thunder. A, a a mildly loud pop is heard as uh, everything within five foot. He needs to make a Constitution save. Ooh. Ten piercing damage to the wheel plus the one thunder damage. And he needs to make a DC fourteen saving throw or take that additional damage as well. For Constitution, he he makes the DC fourteen. All right. Just well. barely. The wagon. I would say, it looks like you fucked up the wheel. It's not gone, but you fucked it up. It, but it is moving still. All right. My so javelin. So I'm, I'm hobbling this man for an additional six points of damage. Another fuck! <laughs> Son of a bitch! As he does keep moving, though. Yeah, I'll say if, if the wagon gets fully off screen, it's gone. Yeah. Kern's turn next, oh, who has no. now okay. noticed the wagon. All right, she's going to try to use the rest of the rest of what she's got to jump onto the wagon. I'll do this one in front of the board for, for the fun of it. OK. Uh, it, if it, she if she does in uh, if she uses the d6 for an ability check, she does get my she does roll the d6 with an advantage. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say, let's say yeah. She's she's putting everything she's got in this. So she's gonna she's gonna roll athletics plus four. So whatever she gets plus four plus the d6. All right. So let's 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 roll. Let's see. Eight plus, eight plus four. four. That's not making it. All right. Huh, face plant. <laughs> yeah, I think that, that does probably put her prone if she tried to jump on a wagon. Oh my god. So she's not moving anymore. I'm just like, hold on my head. Wait, <laughs> I get it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so next it is Quinn. Kern did not fare well, and she's burlier. I'm going to risk it. I'm going to take, uh, I have 40 feet of movement, so I can definitely catch up with the wagon, and I'll try to hop on the back too. Okay. So that's an eight, um, plus my athletics, which is 12. I'm gonna spend the inspiration to make a 13. Oh wait, we already 13 know it's- 13 doesn't be 15. Yeah, yeah, we so already know it's 15. Don't spend that. Fair enough. <laughs> I was gonna go all out and then I'm like, oh yeah, but that's right. But you did right. fail, so you get, you get another one. How about- Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Maud's turn. What's Maud doing? I'm gonna try to hit him with my sword. Okay. Roll the hit. 18 plus something. Six. You definitely hit. 24, yeah. so roll your d6. D6. Add four. Two plus four is six. Good work. Hell yeah. <laughs> <We're doing> <laughs> <six> <laughs> <damage>. <laughs> we nail the math and then go. 
You've done six damage to that to that bandit. Okay. It was looking pretty dang hurt. Lots of ouchies. Need, need somebody to kiss it better, but won't be you, because you're doing the ouchies. I would never, I would never kiss your ouchies. <laughs> I would never kiss your boo-boo. I am causing the boo-boo. <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, Karna's turn. I'm going to just kind of yell out, if the wagon doesn't stop, then it'll pop! And I point, and there's going to be like a moat of vibrating energy that explodes, which would take that front wheel that has been damaged, probably the back wheel too, and the driver. The driver can make a con save versus shatter. Well, 17 plus four, I'm pretty sure he beats the con save. So yes, yeah, my, my save is a 14, yeah. so. He takes eight damage. And the wheel takes 15. Okay. The wheel, I'm gonna say the wheel is broken, which is gonna have the movement speed of the wagon, let's say. I have 35 feet of movement still in me. Would I be able to at least grab onto the side of the wagon, if not jump I'd on it? I'd say grabbing on could be a bonus action. Honestly, I'm just gonna keep pace with it for right now. Okay, I'm I'm, I, am, I am significantly faster than it can move. Turn and you, and you say nothing about the man that's dying. Is that, wait. What man is that? Nothing. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> There's your answer. <laughs> you, I, I will. I will remind you. You heard Billy shout out my smudge at the dead person. You are currently locked in combat, so you, you're not necessarily going to do anything. But you haven't said anything. Either. Billy just says things. Okay. I don't. <laughs> I don't know All what right. that means. I, the player, know what it means. <laughs> but good role playing, Jesse. Here's your inspiration. <laughs> good, good inspiration. I get a point for being a dumbass. <laughs> you, you don't think she'd do it, so you know what? That's fine. The guy in front of you is going to try and hit you again with his little magic forceful thing. And he's going to do it with a 17 against your 15 AC. So uh, Has their smudge made their death save for this round? Oh no, yeah. Let's, needs let's, to let's, fail let's one more save. Yeah, needs let's to fail do, let's, do, more. let's do his save. Ten, a ten or higher, you know they what? continue to live. The, mechanically, Billy can't do much. Maybe Billy will try and give him a help action. Yeah, B Billy, can get the, <laughs> Billy can give them advantage to make the save. Okay, he made it. But you, however, are taking damage. Let's see. You are, you are dealt seven damage. So you're, you are getting pretty hurt. And now it is the leader's turn. He is going to try and cast something on you. Cast something specific? Oh, yes, he is. Oh, dear. All right. Um, I would like you to make a DC 15 wisdom save. Uh, that is a 17. So okay. I, in fact, make that save. What did, what did he try to do? He tried to use whole person on you. Sorry, I need something in there. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's all I reply with. Luckily for you, that is his one whole person. Kern, who is prone. I guess you can get up and try to jump on again. <laughs> yeah, you if, can get up. If it's within 15 feet, yeah. She will try to jump on again. <laughs> jump on it. She does not make it. Oh my gosh. God. Yeah, I think maybe like as she goes prone again, she's like, God oh, damn it, fuck. That's what you get for smoking. My <laughs> 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 uh, Quinn, it is Martin's turn. Oh boy. Uh, well, I should learn car by uh, Kern's example, but I'm gonna try, I'm gonna catch up to the wagon and try to get on it again. All right. So that's half your movement speed. The two. Yeah, that's not gonna do yeah. it. Six. So next is Maud's turn. Maud, what are you doing? <laughs> just good. And Martin keeps. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit again. Oh fuck! It's a two plus. Something. Yeah, it's probably not gonna yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, you do not hit. Fuck. Okay. All right. Um, that's safe. Does the donkey the still give him advantage? Yeah. Okay. Donkey still. Yeah, Billy's advantage. not doing anything else, so. More. That was a fail. If this one, that was a 19. Okay. So, okay. Still alive. So it's two and two. Uh. <laughs> Knowing that this is very ominous for your character, <laughs> you get to be nervous. But I don't even know if you, the player, <laughs> know why it's ominous for your character. I honestly, I don't. I okay, have like, good, like good. that's okay, gonna yeah. make this even nope. better. Yep. Mod All right. heard Billy say my smudge, and she was like. I'm over what here. No. <laughs> All right. I'm here. Perfect. You can't uh, see. No, that's great. That's, that's great. That's amazing. <laughs> Billy can't see. How silly. Of the yeah, I guess, I guess she, she what is silly, she Billy? smelling something familiar. Yeah. The, 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 dra the dramatic so. irony is like a weight on my chest. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I figured so it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. 
<laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh fuck! Is it Karma's turn? <laughs> when we went to take a break, <laughs> I was like, man, I really wanted to figure out what. I think it got a tattoo or something. It might have been a weird symbol. Oh well. And I went to the bathroom and didn't think anything else. <laughs> Oh, does Mod you know? say, does Mod shout anything at the revelation? Oh shit! <laughs> well, here's the thing. It, I figured it out. Mod has. Mod it. Has okay, figured okay. Out shit. Well, here's the thing. You as a player can decide if Mod has figured it out. That's true. Because you just figured it out. I think yeah. <laughs> I mod think... mid fight is like, oh fuck, oh, oh fuck. <laughs> yes. Okay. I I that canonically. She'd think nothing of it, but Billy's staying there. Yeah, for yeah. Multiple bra braying turns. in sadness might just be weeping. Hey, smart. Yeah, so Maud has now been. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> what words would you yell as a free action to indicate that you don't want them to die? Or would you say anything to that effect? Hang on, you bitch! <laughs> That means nothing to Karna. Is it Karna's turn? <laughs> yes! Oh. Okay, I have an ability that could have saved them. Anyway. <laughs> Nick, Nick is giving you multiple opportunities to shout something. Nick has been meditating a little bit it's to try and help you. Okay, All right, uh, I would point. like to be a little stylish here. Mm -hmm. If I were to use one of them as a springboard, would you allow me to roll acrobatics to jump into the back of that wagon instead of athletics? If you do that, they will have to just lose their movement speed next turn. I was going to do it to the lady, so I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, then, then sure, you can try. Um, Acro uh, this is just to use acrobatics, acrobatics. instead of athletics. Okay. It's a then, then yes, role. let's say you've done that. Okay, so I am. I'm going to run, and leap off of uh, Kern. Kern, to try to jump into the back of that wagon. Pardon me. <laughs> I'm not very heavy, but they still feel a hoof kind of digging into the back of their back as I jump off them. Ah! <laughs> uh, that is a 22. Okay, you're in the back of the wagon. That was my action to do that, correct? Uh, yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, so you have a bonus action if you want to do anything with that. But I do have a bonus action. Do I have a bonus action I can actively I, use? I will allow you to, to make a perception check with a bonus action if you'd like to find something in the wagon. I would rather use my perception check. Or you, because you just yelled, oh, fuck, don't die, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you, so you're trying to. So, so as I'm like looking back, I want to see what they're reacting to and what they're reaching Card, for. Cardus empathy signals. Or, or, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. So I'm going to use my perception check for that as I'm looking back. Uh, that is the worst time to roll in that one. I am so sorry. <laughs> that is. The worst you time. think everything back there is handled, and you are thinking nothing of anything happening back I don't there. Don't use an inspiration. <laughs> no, I'm okay. sorry. I'm so sorry. A nat one is a nat one, no matter how much you modify it. You this this dice. I I have been trying very hard. <laughs> <laughs> I as a player, but the dice has disagreed with me. Damn. This dice that has been rolling so this incredibly well this entire time. This dice, dice has chosen. Sometimes in life, the dice says you need character development. The dice, <laughs> the dice has decided to tell you a story. Yeah, the dice is and telling a story like now. <laughs> and uh, trade offer. <laughs> that is. You receive character development and pain. That's that's my turn. Okay, the wagon is going to keep moving. That's fine, but um, while it might leave battle, it can't leave Karna. Uh, Billy will continue to weep and give that character the, <laughs> the health action. That character. Come on, uh, 10 or more. 10 and or more. the bandit in front of Maud will attempt to attack Maud again and <laughs> succeed with an 18. It's getting a little dicey. They do six damage to you. You were very distracted by your revelation that and you've now allowed yourself to be harmed as a result. And this is why you don't emotionally attach yourself to anything. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> don't love anything. That's what Maud, and nothing that, can hurt that, you. That, that's what Maud's gonna think. <laughs> if you hurt yourself first, then no one else can hurt you. Oh boy. Next is the boss's turn, and he's gonna, you know, continue doing his thing. And now Karn is gonna be coming with. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. All right. I uh, left the map. Yeah. So uh, next is Frog, who's asleep. Uh, Kern, who is just. Coughing and wheezing. <laughs> Fucking goddamn. God. <laughs> Fuck. Too old for this shit. I need a cigarette. Beck and Kira are just sort of standing there now, just dismayed as their livelihood rolls away. <sighs> um, what does Martin do? 
All right. Yeah, no, I'm going to run up behind Maud and I, I'll try and do another <laughs> voice attack. I'll I'll focus uh, on the bandit that's still mm-hmm. fighting and just say, Halt! And okay. it, it rolls a wisdom save. Well, I don't think a four will do it. It won't. It, uh, so he has to freeze until the end of his next turn. Okay, he's frozen for now. He, you're you're going to roll with advantage on attacks now. It is your turn. All right. I've got to... Roll with advantage. Roll a second d20. Ooh. Take the higher one. Now I get to have your power. So advantage is 15, 15 right? yeah. plus 6, 21. Okay, yeah, you definitely hit. Four. Plus four is six. Six. So, and then roll these two. Uh, <laughs> five and three. Okay, so, so another six eight. plus five and plus yeah, eight. Yeah, eight sneak okay. attack damage. And then six plus eight is a number that I think is 14? 14. Yes. Okay, so 14 definitely downs this dude. He is, he is done. The battle uh, is effectively over over here, which means we're just gonna focus on Karna now. All right, you, for dramatic start. effect, one more death save. That's true. Yeah, no, I haven't, and I haven't been told to render any aid, so I'm just gonna start tying Frog up. Okay. Now, Maud, you do still have a bonus action. Do you want to use a bonus action to ask someone to help? Yes. Okay. Hello, you don't know me. Please save save that, that, that bandit. I know that bandit. I didn't know that I know the bandit. That's a, that's a good bandit. We you have to know save that, that bandit. bandit. That is a bandit. It's a good bandit. He's not normally a bandit. Martin will look at Frog. It's been like, what, three rounds? So he's gonna be he's gonna be asleep for just a little bit longer. You essentially have like I'll go 40 over seconds to the me. one the donkey's crying over <laughs> and uh, take out some bandages from my pack. Just stabilize and, them. Yeah, essentially stabilize okay. them. So that character is now stabilized. They are not dead. Oh. Just sleeping. They're just sleeping. Yes. Uh, and would you would you like to now uh, make a check for for restraining? Watch me roll a one. <laughs> Four, um, but that plus. is plus three, so seven, and you know what? No. They they are tied. <laughs> I'll, I'm gonna make it a nine. I'm gonna spend the two inspiration to make it a nine if that sets the DC. Well, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> that coin I mean, rolled into the gap. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the risk to make it just a bit harder. Grab it later. So so you have they are tied, um, and that's what you know. <laughs> While I'm in the back of this carriage, uh, as I look around, um, I am going to. Uh, I'll actually switch the lights since we're out of combat. Yeah. Mm. Uh, how damaged would you say that the driver looked by the end of all that? Not very. Not very Not very damaged no. after all that? Okay. On a scale of zero to Jared Leto. <laughs> <laughs> Joker. Okay, so he, he looked relatively unfazed after I cracked him in the knee, exploded a... He didn't like it, but, he, but he's fine. Okay, fine. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, for my action... Ah, well, there's a lot to sort through back here. I need your help, my friend. And I uh, cast Unseen Servant to summon my Unseen Muse to help me throw shit out of the back of this caravan. Okay. So I can start like looking through. Um, do, do you want to make a perception check to see what you want to prioritize? Yes, I, I'm going to, uh, do I have advantage since I have like a guiding hilt right now or? Um, yeah, let's say you do have advantage. Okay, cool. Soul to ransack. Uh, do, 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 do. And I will spend these two to make it a 19. 19, okay. Then yeah, with a 19, you see a, a thing that has like various metals and stuff, and you're like, okay, that's that has what you want in it, probably. All right, I, I take some like straps and I like, kind of hoist that around my back. Okay. And then uh, until I get noticed, I'm just gonna start like you like between myself and my servant, hucking things out the back to save as much of their stuff for them as that I can. We'll make a straight contested roll. His perception versus your stealth. That's fine. Uh, that is a 23. Oh, wow. Yeah, he probably won't beat that, but maybe he gets in that 20. We'll see. He did get in that 20. <laughs> All right. So you I'll... have what's on your back. <laughs> I have what's on my back. Does my unseen start like... He's going to try and shoot another Eldritch Blast Like, at just you. kind of like look back through the flap like, yeah. motherfucker! He'll try to shoot another Eldritch Blast at, at you. Um, without damaging the merchandise, so with disadvantage, let's say. And I have my unseen servant, my muse, kind of like pushing things out the back right now. Okay. So it's whatever me and a second pair of hands are able to do. Well, he misses you, so I'm gonna say the unseen servant, because he missed he missed you with the Elder's Blast, the unseen servant can give you advantage. Excellent, okay. So what do you want me to roll to see how much shit I can? I'll, I'll let you choose between dexterity and athletics, whichever one you prefer. Me and my buddy, let's go. 
Uh, modified 20. Then let's say that get, that, that gets you, because he caught you so early, um, let's say that gets you two. Okay, so me and my own team servant just like grab an yeah. additional bag. Yeah. I have this- You, you have only one in your back, you have one in your hand, and your, your servant has another. Bye-bye! And I leap out the back. Yeah. Uh, can I make an acrobatics roll to try to do it with style? Sure. <laughs> Fuck yeah, 19 on the die, that's a, okay. that's a 24. You need a little twist and- <laughs> I, 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 I land with like a backwards roll, and I give him a, like a sayonara, as he, uh, as he, yeah. Close Fucking down the road. Kurt, piece of shit! <laughs> <laughs> and then me and my unseen servant will uh, walk back down the road with the goods that we were able to uh, recover. As you get back, you see uh, Kira and Beck consoling each other, but <laughs> but they but they at least have a little bit of uh, hope in their eyes when you bring back some of their wares. I was able to save this for you. <clears throat> Thank you. That, that that's that that. It's something. Thank you for that. I know it wasn't as much as we could have possibly saved you, but uh, luckily a caravan like that is pretty noticeable. If, uh, there are only so many places they could go from here. Port Tarif is very big and it's, it's possible to track them down, but it's not easy. Well, I have many friends in Port Tarif, so there's hope yet, and I kind of clasped them on the shoulder. Thank you. Martin will hold up the bandit he had to stabilize. Do you recognize this Mar? I'm not local to this area, so I'm 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 not sure. Uh, I don't I don't I'm not privy to the gangs and or whatnot. And perhaps your little insiders over here know a thing or two. And I just kind of like, uh, which one looks like the m like most secured in terms of like being tied down? I would focus most on Frog being the traitor and definitely the one worth asking questions. Yeah, Frog is also like. He's, he's, a, he's a wimpy little guy. He's I, I just kind of nudge him with my hoof to wake, wake him up. Wakey, wakey. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hello, frog. Hello. <laughs> I, I, and, I, and I just kind of like point to the other two. He's all yours. <laughs> and then I just kind of like wander back and start looking through this bag of, of this box of scrap I have. Are you too interested in interrogating frog? I think you're more interested in the other one, but... Yeah, I also, I, I do, I am interested in interrogating Frog. I'm, okay. I'm fucking pissed at Frog also. I'm, the uh, other character is currently asleep who you've not decided to check on yet, I guess? Yeah, fuck him. I don't, I don't know who this other To is. be fair, they came out of the woodworks and immediately attacked you. Like, yeah. Actually, no, they didn't. Yeah. Oh, did they not? That never happened. Oh, shit, I thought they, they were the when, first When they were attacked, attack. they ran away. Oh, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> not once did they ever attack you. Uh, Mod's gonna go over to... Um, the 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 bandit we haven't checked out yet, and can I pull off his mask? Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, and you see that it's red. Dun dun dun. <laughs> uh, and he he is still out right now. He's not he's not awake. He he was hurt really. He was literally dying. Mm -hmm. So for now we'll we'll come we'll c come over to Karna while while you're check checking in on Ren. Okay. Yeah, I'm just sorting through this box of scrap to see if there is a like because I know the metal that I'm looking for <clears throat> the it, like the engravements on yeah. it that I'd be looking for, and the specific shape of the chipped metal that I'm looking for. Yeah, like, I, yeah we don't have to roll check for it. Like, you find it, it actually almost like vi feels like it vibrates in your hand. So they are out there. And I smile. It feels like like the, the your, your scabbard is like vibrating in tune with it. You watch as I pull the, like the sword that I have not pulled out of its scabbard yet, from its scabbard, and it is an absolutely shattered blade. Like it is maybe like three or four inches long, just shattered curved metal that looks like it was uh, destroyed by something very heavy. Does it look like that this particular shard fits into like one of the like one of the open gaps that are currently in it? Let's do a luck check for that. Luck check. Well, that's dead even. That's a ten. So. So it's just a piece. Yeah. So it, 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 it doesn't in, fit like a puzzle. It doesn't fit in any of these specific spots, but this is definitely a piece of it. I'm so sorry. I, I know that you're going through a very hard time right now, but is there any way I could just buy this piece from you? Um, yes, of course. Uh, we'll, we'll just say, hope, like, you, you, you saved our, our, our stock. Can, can we just sell it to you wholesale? How much would that normally be? Uh, f f 50 bits. I, th I, I throw in an additional 10 just for their hardship because I couldn't save the rest of your inventory. I, I hope whatever's in those is valuable. 
Uh, it, it is, thank you. Um, and then I set the rest of the scrap in front of them, this being the only piece, I imagine, in this box. Yeah, that's the, only, that's the only piece you can find there. I just slot it into the scabbard, just like that's just where I'm going to keep it. Gotcha. Yeah. Are there any other, well, like, because as he's, as Karna's going through the, the inventory he saved, is there anything else that stands out, or is it all just various pieces of jewelry? Well, the, these. The box that I had was just scrap metal, I'm assuming. Uh, it was a bunch of metals. And, and stuff. then I got two other parcels that I have not looked through. Less than ten, it's pieces, more than ten, it's it's actual like jewelry they've already made. Fourteen, so one one of them is jewelry and the other is a nat one. So the other is like little like like things for piecing together. Like little, yeah, it's not, like it's basically toolboxes. It's not their most value, like the most valuable stuff in the mm. thing. So I didn't really have time to look through them, but hey. yeah. So it's, it was like it's like string and other stuff, stuff that they could have easily Wire. replaced. Unfortunately, frogs finally starting to like grok to what's going on. It's like, oh, oh, I'm guessing. oh! I suddenly got very sleepy. The wagon's gone. I'm guessing Kern has a f- expression. Kern is just sitting there, crouched over, <coughs> <coughs> glaring. And just that, just a lot of that. And Frog is just like, oh, sorry? Mod, slap him? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Slap him. Open. Slap him with your beans. All right. Bean slap. <laughs> you got beaned. You got beaned, bitch. Uh, and he's like, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry? I, sorry. What do you want me to say? Well, you could start with telling us where your friends are going. I don't know. You think you think they told me? I, I suppose not. Uh, but it was worth asking, wouldn't it be? They they offered me a hundred fifty bits to to take the wagon to a location and and participate in uh, the, the ambush. That's that's what they did. Did they pay you up front? No. Mm, mistake. Not even half. No. Oh, did they have a meeting spot where they would pay you? Where, where I was supposed to drop off the, the wagon, but I don't, I don't know if they're going there now. The wagon can't get far. I wasn't supposed to take it very far. I was supposed to take it down the road and then people would meet me there and then t- t- take the rest away. That was the plan. That would be our best lead in following the shipment. Quick question: What what has Maud put together at the moment has happened? Um, I think that they recruited a child to be in their like shit because this, this is like a seventeen year old that could have died that mm-hmm. almost died yeah because of one hundred fifty bits that he didn't even get up front that was just <laughs> that was just for Frog yeah that's just that's, for frog. that's Frog he might even be a specialist here he might have gotten paid less we don't know yeah Frog absolutely got paid like Frog got the bo- bottom barrel payment. Oh, to be clear. A, oh, poor frog. <laughs> poor frog! <laughs> poor, poor frog! <laughs> look, Car- look Car- has been on the, Car- has been on the inside of at least one criminal op- operation <laughs> at one point or another. I'll do know this one. Uh, this one, uh, he works at a bakery that I, I work at. He's not a criminal. Looks... Can be very deceiving, I he take seems, it. He seems like a criminal. But that's that's Kern. He, 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 did, he did do crime. He can be a good person, but once you cross the line of the law, you are a criminal. He did, he, he's a scared child. Good person, man. Look at his arms. That is not... Not on anyone with that, is it not? <laughs> and despite his String arms, <laughs> he is here and... I tried to steal from these people. How far away from town did we get before this happened? I'm guessing we're... I'd say an hour or two. Okay, so yeah. You're, you're nearly halfway, let's say. Someone makes one mistake that, that, does, that does not make him bad, that makes him influenced. We're all influenced. I think we might kill two birds with one stone if we continue on our way down the road. If we don't run into the cart, we can at least drop these off in Port Tarif and let the authorities handle it. Uh, the problem we run into there is transporting our new, let's say, companions. Do I get a vote? You do. Kill him. You don't get a vote. And Frog is like, what? <laughs> Kill who? You are entitled to take the life of your traitor into your own hands, but these two mm. require delicate touch. Delicate. That one 
The one that you're protecting nearly killed me. He bakes bread. The, and he's also attempted murder. And he stabbed me. Well, we... I, I stabbed him. He was... He, I, I, I stabbed, stabbed him, him too. And, I, I, and it, was, it was good that way until, until that one brought him back. He's a kid. He, we should not... We should not be... What the, why are we even talking about this? I'm not going to execute prisoners. I will help take them to Port Tarif, but that is all my assistance will get you. Uh, the cart that the that Billy is leading, would that cart support his weight? Ren's weight? Ren is definitely very light. He's very, he's very like he's, he's like he's lanky. He's but lanky, he's, but like he doesn't have a lot of meat on his bones. I will carry him. Well, we have that, but that still leaves the other one. Do you believe these might have bounties on their heads? Perhaps you can still make back some of your losses. Let, let me see that hand. She she might know something about it, uh, but she does not. I, I have dalliances with the criminal underworld. May I make a history check? Yeah. And you have poor experience, too. I do. Uh, 18. Okay. Then you know that that is that the symbol... Ooh, secret! I know this person, don't I? You do know this person. You, you, Wait, you know, so I, I know this! Who is it? This is from the Jack of Aces! The Jack of Aces? Jack of who? Jack of Aces! He's... He was my first employer! So you are a criminal. Oh, once or twice, certainly. Okay, I think we can <laughs> save the child! Okay, who we'll just... I, 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 tur I, I turn to, uh, essentially the remainder of the caravan. I can make you a bargain. For this one's life, you can have that one and that one. I point to Frog and the still unconscious bandit. Frog's like, oh, I'm gonna be with her. Please. I, I, I shrug. You made your own choices. <laughs> <laughs> Jack of Aces is a uh, old, how would I say it? Associate? No, not quite. Parishioner of mine. Uh, I might be able to figure out what happened to your goods. But in exchange for this young man's life, you may take their bounties, whatever you may find from them, and the assurance that I will do my darndest to help you find your lost goods. Or at least find some form of compensation therein. Uh, would you like me to roll a persuasion check for that? Um, or anything? No, no honestly, like, okay. like... I'm making enough sense that I don't have it, to. It, it makes sense, and you brought back stuff you didn't have to. She has no reason not to trust you on this. Um, so, and, and you're offering her stuff that she wants, and that, that, that is fine. And essentially free money as long as they're willing to transport the two other people. Yeah, she has no reason not to just go with this. So, fine. You do what you want with that one. We are going to make the trip back to, back, back to Tradesman's Saddle just to regroup and figure out our, our thing and... Wonderful. Well, drop my name with Aaron at the tavern. They might set you up with a, a swell deal. Thank you. Of course. Anything to help. And anything for a good story. Now who's on for an adventure? Martin just lugs Ren's arms around him like a cow and just... <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> to the road! And, and you, yeah, you guys just head down the road towards Port Taraf. Uh, Mod looks miserable. <laughs> as as, as Karn is just playing happily. <laughs> Thank you, everybody who who, who watched. Uh, you didn't have to, and you did. And that you did. That's <laughs> that. That is the, that is the coolest thing you could do with your time for us. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. And and we'll be, we'll be back next time with, with more session two. And maybe I'll put a preview right here. That'd be nuts. What will happen? Because we record these in advance. That's crazy. This is months before you're gonna see it. <laughs> next time we, on we Tales might look, Unwritten. Yeah. They, they, they goon all up and down the place, but usually not this hard. I cut you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's family shit, okay? I know you don't I'm, have to worry about it. I'm not part of your family. I know that. I'm beginning to put two and two together. <laughs> 
Hey, thank you so much for sticking around for the whole video. And if you are a YouTube member or patron, you can go watch episode two immediately, as well as Karna's session zero, where we played out his entire backstory. It's another hour, very similar quality to what you just saw. So if that sounds cool to you, go check it out.